All right, we're gonna do our big doozy, the conf the so-called confusing one, and that that is conditional probability. And I'm gonna tell you the trick that made this make a lot more sense to me. Probability. Make sure I'm spelling it right. So here's the trick. When you ever, whenever you hear conditional probability, or whenever you hear given something or other, which is a code word for conditional probability, whenever you hear that, you think, what can I eliminate? So conditional probability is elimination. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is copy down uh, from, from, a, from one of my previous videos that I just made. I'm going to copy down my, my contingency table. Okay, so um, we've got our conditional stuff, and uh, the reason that I said that conditional probability or joint, conditional probability equals elimination is that when we're given a problem that that we're going to have to do conditional probability, we're going to have to calculate a conditional probability in order to uh, solve that problem. Almost always, you 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 actually have a word that says conditional, conditioned or given, like if you say, given that the first letter is an A, what's the probability that the second letter is an A? Or given that the first letter is a B, what's the probability that the second letter is an A? So when you, whenever you hear that, what you want to do is you want to look at your contingency table and say, what can I eliminate? So let's, let's do a couple samples here. Let's say um, we want, we're being told to calculate the probability of um, We'll say the probability that um, first digit. I'm just going to write it out in English here. Like probability that the first letter equals um, a, given that the second letter is b. Now, if we were to write that using the notation that I've been using, it would look like this. Probability that uh, probability of a1 given a sub 1 given b2. Right? So how do we calculate that? Well, so remember given is what comes after this line. So we're being told we know that the second letter is a b. And on our contingency table, we have a column where the second letter is B, and it's this right here, B2. So this is only the uh, this is the only stuff that uh, that this is only the things that end with B out of our out of our set that we've been working with. So when we're given that, we then have to say, okay, well, if if it's if we're only looking at this, all of a sudden we're going to have like this is going to be the total. Like down here, this 0.53, it's no longer 0.53. This is the new one. This is the out of all the things that end with B2 or that end with B. Um, there's only there's only two possibilities now. There's the one there's A B, and there's B B. And so, how can we calculate a probability here that is going to be um, you know how often? How often? Once we know that the second character is a B, how often is the first letter an A? So it's actually pretty easy. What we do for joint or for conditional probability is we say we do, we we take this number. Wait a minute. No. Um, so here's here's our AB, right? This is a AB is this cell and this is BB. So we're we're being asked what's the probability? I'm going to write this again one more different way. What's the probability? of A, B, given that it's something B. That would be another way of saying that, although that's, you probably never see that on a test. That's not really like a, a established way of, of writing a probability, but what's well, the probability of A, B, given something B? So, so here's, here's all of our something Bs, A, B, and B, B. So we know that in total this makes up 0.53. And we know that AB is 0.33 out of 0.53. And what I just said is actually the answer. When you say 0.33 out of 0.53, uh, 
I mean, you're basically saying this um, 0.33 over 0.53. And that's actually how we solve it. We say we, we, we heard the word given, given that the second letter is a B, then we eliminated most of our table, and then we said, all right, there's our answer, and there's out of how much we're dividing it by. Like, that's that's what we're doing. So we're going to take the, uh, this, what this is right here is it is the, uh, the joint probability of A and B, or it's the joint probability of AB over the marginal probability of something uh, something B uh, which is B2 B sub 2 so we're doing this number over this number that's how we calculate a conditional probability okay, now what if we were said what if let's do another one let's say what's the probability so that's that's one let's box this off what's the probability of um, <clears throat> the second letter, let's say this time we're going to be given the first letter. So what's the probability that um, we have A as the second letter? So what's the probability of A2 given A sub 1? So when you see that, what does that mean? Probability that the second letter is an A given that the first letter is an A. Alright, we know the first letter is an A. There's our row of things that begin with A right here, A1, so we can eliminate everything else. So now we've only got three numbers to think about. We've got, we've got the, the, uh, the total number of, the total frequency of, uh, you know, events that, are, that begin with A, and that's 0.46. And then we've got AA, 0.13, and AB, 0.33. So again, it's going to be the joint, joint, uh, frequency of AA over uh, marginal that is A sub 1, meaning this number over this number, AA over A1, um, which is point equals point 0.13 over point 0.46. Now, um, conditional probabilities, even when we have fairly simple, where did my calculator go? Um, it's a little bit harder to do this kind of math in your head. So let's let's convert these into decimals because we started with decimals. We don't really want to give a, we don't want to really hand in fractions. So uh, let's see, can you see my calculator pretty well there? Yeah. So there we go. 0.33 for this for the first one. 0.33 over 0.5. Three equals uh, approximately equal point six two, right? How do we get a bigger number? I mean, point six two is bigger than any of these numbers. How did that happen? Well, it happened because we're we're saying that we're basically making point five three into one. If we were to scale this up to one, then these would both scale up along with it to be. Uh, you know, larger numbers uh, that would add up to one. So, again, let's do it for the second question. Probability that we have A, A, given that we, or the probability of the second letter being an A, given that the first letter is an A. Um, so that's going to be 0.13 divided by 0.46. And that equals approximately 0.28. Mm -hmm. So that's conditional probability, and again, whenever you hear conditional, or conditioned on, or what is the probability of something given something else, you want to look at your table, your contingency table that you've made, hopefully already, and say, what am I ruling out? And then do it, and then divide whatever the joint is that you're looking for, over the marginal from that same row and you know you'll know it's the right marginal because when you actually like literally like put your hands on your table and say I know that the first letter is an A therefore I can eliminate everything else 
then you know for sure that you're picking the right marginal frequency because you've basically just a row that you're working with.